Tesla's relentless pursuit of innovation continues to captivate the world as they push the boundaries across various technological fronts. From their cutting-edge dojo training computer, poised to leapfrog ahead in computing power, to the development of the Tesla network software, which aims to reshape transportation with an Uber-like ride-sharing service, the company leaves no stone unturned. Equipped with a minimalistic array of sensors, Tesla cars boast advanced capabilities powered by AI and machine learning breakthroughs. This time round, Elon Musk confidently predicts the arrival of a dedicated robotaxi service around the 2024-2025 timeframe given the data he sees today. With significant advancements in the convergence of these remarkable technologies expected in 2024, the puzzle seems nearly complete. Yet there remains a missing piece, a final ingredient that promises to bring Tesla's grand vision to its fullest potential. And Tesla may have just acquired the key to scaling this essential new technology required to fulfill its ambitious goals. And before we continue, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and a brand new set of quarterly financial data going back up to 15 years on over 9,000 stocks, and it's all freely available. Tesla just recently acquired a wireless charging pioneer based in Germany called Wifirion. Wifirion currently works to provide energy solutions for powering mobile robots and autonomous industrial vehicles. They actually specialize in managing entire fleets more efficiently through intelligent wireless charging that is meant to reduce energy consumption, extend battery life, and increase productivity. Before Tesla acquired them, this company was already planning to expand to the North American market, but now they may be working closer within Tesla to help achieve their own company's goals. Wifurion has been integrated in as Tesla Engineering Germany, according to findings from user Berlinergy on Twitter, and this will fit in nicely with Tesla's other German divisions, including the former Grohmann Engineering, which is also called Tesla Automation and based in Germany. And Tesla now also has the massive Giga Berlin as its German hub, which will help support and bolster its satellite businesses and advanced engineering teams. Wifurion has three main parts to its business, the wireless charging technology, their own battery systems, and they make digital hubs. Starting with wireless charging, which appears to be the key rationale behind Tesla's motives here, Wifurion sells a product called Ada Link, which is made up of four components, a wall box, a transmitter coil, a receiver coil, and power electronics. The wall box and transmitter coils are commonly mounted to a fixed location, which receives power from the wall or the grid, and then a receiver coil and a small box containing the power electronics are mounted onto a mobile device, and this is really the heart of the system. And the CEO, Florian Reiners, makes a point that these latter two systems are designed to be as small and compact as possible. It works by using a magnetic field between two coils, the one on the wall or floor, wherever it's mounted, and the one on the mobile vehicle. The vehicle, which is typically hybrid or electric, such as a forklift in Wifurion's case, drives around doing its work. But when it moves over the transmitter coil, the Wifurion system takes about a second to detect that the coils have lined up and it starts sending power to the vehicle. They have a setup which they call in-process charging, where in the case of these forklifts, they identify where the forklifts frequently stop, and that's where they install the rapid inductive charging unit. Currently, the main use case is for AGVs, or automated guided vehicles, which typically follow preset paths. But Wifurion also supports autonomous vehicles as well. This could actually greatly benefit Tesla's in-factory robotic systems, keeping wireless robots charged almost all the time, so they can continue performing their tasks without having to stop. This is actually interesting as it relates to something Elon Musk talked about when he was on Dan Carlin's Hardcore History show a while back, when he spoke about the planes during the war and how the range, as well as the rate of refueling, made an enormous difference in battle. If a fleet of planes was able to cut down long refueling times and say refuel three times faster, that was almost equivalent to having a fleet size that was roughly three times larger, 
because the planes could constantly be put back into the air. And so a similar analogy may apply here, where having a wireless robot that's almost always charged reduces downtime and eliminates the need for perhaps buying a second expensive robot. Wifurion also sells small battery packs and they use LFP batteries or lithium iron phosphate, which is the same battery chemistry that Tesla uses in the shorter range Model 3s and Model Ys. And LTO batteries are also made at Wifurion, which are lithium titanium oxide batteries, which have very high cycle life, a good safety profile and fast charging times but they're more expensive and have low energy density, making them less efficient. It's likely that Tesla isn't looking to add new types of battery packs and chemistries to its roster, and so it would make sense to move some of these engineers to Tesla's battery division or have them focus on other parts of Wifurion's business, assuming Tesla doesn't plan to continue expanding Wifurion in the traditional sense by selling to more third-party customers and instead begin integrating the technology into its own business to help Tesla scale further and faster. The third part of Wifurion's business is the digital hub, which uses the information collected by the remote power electronics inside the vehicle and sends the data when it's connected to the wall box. Data such as charging information, temperature, state of charge, voltage, and charging current over time can be transmitted over and through Wifurion's app and services, can be viewed and analyzed in real time. This is interesting since it seems like they have all of the elements that Tesla already employs for their own software and hardware, making it a good fit. It's just not yet integrated into Tesla's systems or products. Now, one of the drawbacks of wireless charging is that energy is typically lost in the process when converting from electricity to a magnetic field and back to electricity, which also means that charging ends up taking longer. However, Wifurion says their products can deliver high 93% efficiency. Now currently, it looks like the highest power output product that they sell delivers just 12 kilowatts of power. To put this into context, this compares to something like a high-powered Tesla supercharger, which is about 20 times that at 250 kilowatts. Now Wifurion systems are currently designed for industrial purposes. And although they can charge electric vehicles, they're currently being used mainly on hybrids, which are more convenient given the smaller battery size, making them easier to fully charge. One of the missing puzzle pieces to Tesla's full self-driving robo-taxi plans is none other than charging. Right now, a human is required to plug the charging cable into the vehicle. Tesla has attempted other solutions in the past, including the popular snake charger, but having a vast amount of machinery at every site or charging station will lead to high maintenance costs and frequent repairs. It would also be almost ridiculous and expensive to have something like a Tesla Optimus bot tag along to manage a supercharger station just so it can plug vehicles in. And that seems pie in the sky for now as Tesla's robotaxi ambitions shouldn't be hindered by having to now wait for Tesla bot to be ready. A logical approach is wireless inductive charging, which has a big advantage of no wear and tear since there are no moving parts, and there's no cable needed to be plugged in. Two coils simply need to be lined up, which an autonomous car can easily do on its own with a floor pad charger. And so this may be potentially a good solution for Tesla's robotaxi charging needs to completely remove human intervention. Interestingly, Tesla Optimus bots can be charged this way as well, as they would have much smaller batteries, closer to 3 kilowatt hours, and be much more well suited for even the current Wifurion technology. But rolling this out to vehicles with much larger battery packs won't come without its challenges. Tesla already has expertise in terms of wireless chargers, as they recently launched a small phone charging pad that can charge multiple devices at once, no matter the orientation on the pad. And this is something that Apple had planned to do, but they eventually weren't able to on their own, demonstrating the difficulty of the problem that was challenging but doable for Tesla engineers. Wirelessly charging a Tesla battery pack could be the biggest challenge yet. Wifurion has the pieces to retrofit vehicles with their power electronics and or eventually build them right into Tesla vehicles. However, the cost may be prohibitive currently at this larger scale. Tesla will need to make coils as efficient and compact as possible to cut cost. 
But right now a supercharger is almost completely manufactured at the factory and installed virtually anywhere with minimal footprint. Adding copper coils into the mix and onto the surface of parking spots may require a completely different type of device to be manufactured. Perhaps one where the wall box and transmitter coil are in the same assembly and connect to a central power supply that can have multiple of these coils, say one per parking spot, and then a supported vehicle would need to have the coil and power electronics built right into the car. That said, the coils are able to work with different battery voltages like 12 volts or 48 volts, but there are still safety considerations, especially with scaling up the power of such a magnetic field. And so if Tesla is looking at the Wifurion deal to increase efficiency and automation within its factories, ultimately leading to higher productivity and reduced costs, Wifurion's technology may be close enough to accomplish this today. But to solve Tesla's autonomous robotaxi charging challenge appears like it will take a lot more engineering work to design compact, cost-effective solutions that will scale based on battery pack size into a large charging network that blankets already many countries in the world. However, with the addition of Wifurion specializing in scaling wireless charging fleet-wide, Tesla may have a plan to solve this on a grand scale. So do you think Tesla made this purchase of Wifurion just for industrial charging purposes within its factories, or will Tesla attempt to use the newfound expertise and technology to scale up wireless robotaxi charging to the masses? Don't forget to watch my last video on Tesla Full Self-Driving's ChatGPT moment. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.